Hello, and welcome to our notes on blood. This is notes number one of the serology unit. We are going to focus on blood, even though oftentimes during serology, that does include other bodily fluids. Uh, but during our investigations, we'll be focused primarily on blood. So let's talk about blood. First of all, the average human uh, adult has approximately 10 pints of blood. So that would be about five and a half liters. So if you can think of a, a one liter bottle or even a two liter bottle, kind of figure out what five and a half liters would be. That's how much total blood the average adult has. Blood is actually made of two different parts. There are the cells and then there's the liquid, which we call plasma. So we're gonna talk about the two different parts in order to understand how we use blood in forensics, we have to understand what it's made of and what those parts are so you can understand how we then use them to potentially solve crimes. Blood cells are produced in the bone marrow, in the pelvis, and sometimes in the upper part of the femur. Your other bones do have a middle substance of bone marrow, but it's not active. Uh, it is active when you are developing in your mother's womb and as you get closer and closer to birth more and more of the small bones the bone marrow shuts down so that by the time you're an adult the only bone marrow that's active is your pelvis and again sometimes the upper part of the femur but primarily the, the pelvis just quick aside uh, so here in the pelvis if you wanted to um, give someone a bone marrow transplant because there are some diseases like leukemia, which is a cancer of your white blood cells. To cure that disease, they have to kill all the bone marrow because it's the part that's making the cancerous cells and then transplant it with bone marrow from a healthy person. So they actually take a big needle, inject it, drill into the pelvis and extract some of the bone marrow and then put it into someone else. Now there have been one or two cases where someone who has gotten a bone marrow transplant has gone on to commit crimes and their DNA from their blood doesn't match the DNA from the rest of their body because the bone marrow from the donor produces the blood cells in their blood, which is where we get the DNA, but the, their cheek cells and the other cells from the rest of their body have their own DNA. So there have been one or two cases like that in the United States where a criminal got away with it for a little bit until they figured out what was going on. Not a common thing at all, but it has happened. All right. In terms of the cells that are made in the bone marrow, the most common is called the erythrocyte. We call it the red blood cell. This is a super important cell because it carries oxygen. They look like little red donuts, except for there's no hole. In that middle right there is where the oxygen binds. There is a molecule called the hemoglobin, which your body makes, and it allows these red blood cells to pick up oxygen in the lungs and transport them throughout your body. Red blood cells do not have a nucleus. They lose their nucleus before they leave the bone marrow, and that's in order for them to be as flexible as possible to fit through all of your blood vessels without getting stuck. The nucleus would be a hard thing in the middle that might get them stuck and if you get stuck in the middle of a let's say a capillary or a blood vessel that would cause potentially a heart attack or a stroke which would be something we don't want so the red blood cells do not have a nucleus and we cannot get dna from red blood cells because they have no dna in them other than mitochondrial dna they still do have mitochondria we still can't get mitochondrial dna more than 99% of all the blood cells in your blood are red blood cells. They're that important. There is a test that you can look at to see how many red blood cells there are. It's called a hematocrit test. It basically takes the percentage of your total blood volume that's red blood cells. They do this test um, not usually to help solve crimes. They usually do it to see how healthy you are. But I think it is interesting that males on average have 45% of the total blood volume is red blood cells. So 99% of the cells are red blood cells. 
but when you take into account all the liquid portion, again the plasma, it's about 45%. You can see the other cells are this little white line there. Females are a little lower, and the reason females have a lower count of red blood cells is because women menstruate. So because uh, of a monthly period, they're losing blood, and females, your bodies have to work that much harder to create new red blood cells on a constant basis where males do not. I guess they could use that test to uh, differentiate between male versus female, but it's unlikely. Uh, it's much more of a clinical test for, for disease. Anyway, the next kind of blood cell is the leukocyte or white blood cell. And leukocytes, uh, you can see they're a little larger than red blood cell. They're also generally more circular and they protect against infection. They, there's several different types. They have several different uh, roles in the immune system, but they are key to the immune system, one of the biggest keys. And they do have a nucleus, and when we test blood for DNA, it is in the white blood cells that we are getting that DNA from. The third cell is actually not a full cell. It's called platelets, and they are cell fragments, and they are involved in clotting. So you can see there are a whole bunch of little platelets, and essentially, when you get cut, there are chemicals in your cells that get released that activate the platelets to make them get sticky. And they get sticky, and they stick together, and they form a barrier that blocks the red blood cells, and once you get enough red blood cells stacked up against this uh, sticky platelet mesh, then that stops the bleeding. So that is how clotting works. It, platelets are the main thing involved. Okay, so that covers the three cells, red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. Now let's look at the plasma. The plasma is the liquid portion of your blood, and there are a large number of things in your blood, of organic and inorganic substances that are dissolved in essentially water. Um, there are three different main proteins that are in your blood, and uh, so I'm going to tell you what those three are, and then we're done. The first two we're going to talk about together. One's called the albumins, the other is the globulins. They essentially work the same way, but they're structurally very different, which is why they have two different names. Um, there's a picture of an albumin, and here is a globulin. You can see they look nothing alike, but they do the same kind of jobs in the blood. So uh, some of the functions that they do, they can act as buffers. And if you remember from chemistry, a buffer is a substance that keeps the pH of a liquid from from going too high or too low, so it keeps the pH in a, a steady range. They also often bind and transport other things in the plasma to move them around the body. Things like lipids and hormones and vitamins and metals. Like if you have iron in your blood, most of that iron is in red blood cells, but you could have some iron, but it's not just going to be like an iron molecule floating around the blood. It's going to get attached to an albumin or a globulin that then transports it around your blood. Uh, same thing with hormones. Some albumins and globulins have a little bit of a factor in that clotting response with platelets, but not much. Some albumins and globulins act as enzymes, and if you remember from biology, an enzyme is a molecule which helps a chemical reaction happen. Some of the albumins and globulins are hormones themselves, and some of them are antibodies, and antibodies are one of the key structures in your body responsible for your immune system. Along with the white blood cells, antibodies are key. We'll get more into antibodies in another uh, notes. The final type of protein in your plasma is called fibrinogen. This is the other key component in, cl in clotting. Uh, they act like little fibers. So when the platelets get activated and get sticky, the fibrinogen also gets activated and it gets stringy and between the stringing and the sticky, it's able to, to make that nice web mesh to allow you to have clotting so that you can form uh, scabs and things like that. So that's it. We've got your basic idea of what blood is made of, the plasma, 
and the cells. And starting next notes, we'll start talking about what uh, kind of tests we can do in order to use that knowledge of what blood is into solving crimes. Thank you for listening. I'll talk to you next time.